I'm going to show you a wonderful little polyhedron. I call it the sharpohedron. That's not because the points are sharp. They're not. It's named after Abraham Sharp, who invented it in the late 1600s. Strangely, in the over 300 years since he first made one, no one else has made another one until now. So I'll tell you a little bit about it and show you several ways that you can make one. It has 18 faces and is something like a puffed up triangular pyramid. This is a wood one I made. It's assembled from six skinny rhombi and 12 kite shaped pieces. This is made of Baltic birch. I laser cut the individual faces, beveled the edges and glued them together. You can see it has these four six-sided peaks. There are also four of these flatter regions where three kites come together. You can easily make a paper version by cutting out the individual faces and taping them together. There's a link at the end of this video to the face shape templates that you can print out from my website. Or if you prefer a net like this, with all the faces connected, you can cut this out and fold it up. It's on my website also. In a minute, I'm going to show you two other very different ways to make your own sharpohedron. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about it and why I like it. Abraham Sharp was a scientific instrument maker and mathematician who loved making things and doing long, hard calculations. He's most famous for his very precise astronomical and scientific instruments like these, which are preserved in some museums. And for calculating the decimal value of pi to over 70 places. Back in 1699, this was the world's record for figuring out the digits of pi. He actually calculated pi twice to 70 decimal places by hand in two different ways so he could check for errors. Sharp combined his love of calculating and his love of making things when he wrote a weird little book called Geometry Improved. It was published in 1717. In this book, he shows a dozen new polyhedra that he invented. Some are quite complex for the time, with up to 120 faces. They involve a number of original design ideas, but I don't think anyone studied his book for 300 years. It's a bit of a challenge to read because it's very dry and doesn't try to explain what he was thinking. What you mostly notice is that he does very lengthy calculations with 20 to 30 decimal digits of precision. Today I want to focus on just one of his original polyhedra, his simplest one, the one I call the sharpohedron. Here's his engraving of it from the book you'll recognize the rhombi and the kite-shaped faces. When Sharp wrote about his polyhedra, he stated all their dimensions with enormous accuracy, as if you could make one with subatomic precision. But ignore that. What I want to show you are two more ways that you can make your own sharpohedron. This first method is not how Sharp did it. Nowadays, we can just use a 3D printer to do all the precision work. The file for this is on my website. Again, check the link at the end of this video. So if you have access to a 3D printer, you can have a sharpohedron in your hands pretty quickly. It's quite amazing to me that Abraham Sharp designed this in the 1600s and described it so precisely, yet nobody bothered to make one for over 300 years. And now in the 21st century, we can just push a button and his precise thoughts are robotically assembled for us into something physical. What would he have thought of that? So how did Sharp make his sharpohedron? His book explains how to start with a cube, mark lines on the surface, then cut at an angle following the lines. With 12 precise cuts, you can slice a cube into a sharpohedron. I've reproduced his steps. He starts with a cube. I've made a little laser cut box here to help me check it for accuracy. We'll need to find the midpoints of all 12 edges. Since Sharp was so accurate about everything, 
I decided to make a little marking tool that's easier than using a ruler. It's just a thin piece of mechanical pencil lead in a wooden holder. It's fast and accurate for marking the exact middle of each edge. Then we mark the cutting lines, which go from just four of the eight corners, connecting each to the two opposite edge midpoints. The center regions here will become the six rhombi, one rhombus from each of the six faces of the cube. When marking it, Note that you don't rotate the cube 90 degrees. The pattern doesn't have any fourfold symmetry. Once it's all marked, you can start making the 12 slices. Each is the same, starting at a corner and cutting slantwise to remove a pyramid from along an edge. I've clamped the block to a workbench and I'm using a little Japanese pole saw. To aim, I just keep one eye in the plane of the saw and aim along the two lines that I want to follow. Every cut is the same, going down from a corner. I just rotate the block to bring the next edge into position. It's a little tricky to start at a shallow angle right along an edge, so take your time. The later cuts overlap, so there's less to remove, and you begin to make the kite shapes. After three cuts, you'll have three kites. I'll clean off that little bump later with a small knife. After a total of 12 cuts, one for each of the 12 cube edges, you'll have all 12 kites. A little sanding removes the saw marks and smooths it all up. Then a coat of tongue oil gives it a simple finish, appropriate for something made in the 1600s. It really is a beautifully tactile object to hold. Very solid, very elegant. It's fun to turn it all around in your hands and study it different ways. You can think of how it is similar to a regular tetrahedron, but rounder. You can imagine a sphere inside, which would be tangent to all 18 faces. You can see that the four corners each have six-fold symmetry, and the short diagonal of the rhombus exactly equals the short diagonal of the kite shape. It's interesting that the area of each rhombus is exactly one-third the area of the cube's face. And the area of each kite is exactly one-fifth of the cube face. There's much more to say about Abraham Sharp and his polyhedra, but maybe this is enough to get you interested in making one. When I posted a clip of the Sharpahedron on my Instagram page, I received some questions, so I thought making this little video might be useful. But for more detailed information, check out the paper I wrote about all this. Here's a link to it the paper templates, and the STL file for 3D printing. After 300 years, I think Abraham Sharp would be very happy to see more people appreciating his creations.